many people believe that T.L. Osborne had more miracles and salvations than anyone in history. But when a Messianic Jewish rabbi showed him how to be in proper alignment, so much glory appeared, T.L. had to adjust his theology. Next on It's Supernatural. So, uh, T.L. Osborne, who, I'll, I'll tell you, this man walked in such miracles and so many salvations uh, that uh, he's, he's in Africa, and he used to go to you know, foreign countries, and that's why he isn't as well known in the United States. But he, he was in Africa having a meeting, and he keeps saying at the end of his meeting, the rabbi is coming, the rabbi is coming. Well, guess what? I got the rabbi here that was coming, Rabbi Kurt Landry. Uh, rabbi, take me to this, you, you go to, uh, where was this in Africa? We went to Togo. Oh, well-known place. Yes. And, and you, so you went to Togo, you get there, the expectancy level had to be sky high. He kept saying, you think this is good, the rabbi is coming. So rabbi, you come. Uh, what happened? It was so powerful that when we were there, we knew that if we brought the one new man that the Apostle Paul was speaking about in Ephesians chapter 2, that God would do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. We knew, we had great expectation, but at this point we have never done it in a large, uh, you know, healing environment like this. There was probably 35, 40,000 people in this soccer field. This was the first night. It grew to 50,000, you know, by the third night. And uh, so Christy and I got up, we did the repentance. Uh, I spoke the blessing over them. They received it. And, and I mean, it was being translated into three languages. And, and I was speaking it in English and it was drowning out. The, the, the next two languages, Togonese and, and French. And it was just absolutely so powerful. And uh, Dr. Osborne purposely hung back and he says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up on the platform once you have set the atmosphere according to what we had discussed. And as soon as he came up on the platform, he was not speaking any longer than five to seven minutes. And then off to the left, I'll never forget it. This was life changing for him and for myself. Off to the left, probably about, 10 or 15 people back, there was a woman and she was screaming. And, uh, and, and Dr. Osborne was very sensitive. He taught me this. He says, anytime you're doing an outreach, always look for God's trigger. Let God tr choose the trigger point. Don't, don't go, don't get ahead of God. Preach, preach your message. But he didn't even- I mean, what a privilege you had. He mentored you on the secrets that, so they didn't go to the grave so you could release them, but go ahead. But he was so sensitive, that, that, that lady was the trigger, and, he, and I'll never forget, he looked over Sid and he said, Mama, 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 come on up here. So he had some of his uh, people bring her up on the platform, and uh, at this point, Dr. Osborne was standing on the platform and I was sitting down with all the pastors around the back, and they gave us strict instruction, and you know me, I'm, I'm a man of honor, and I, I'm under authority, but as soon as he started to speak to this woman, I jumped up out of my seat and I literally stood like right here, right next to him. Uh, I would, and I, sh I shouldn't have, but I was just standing there and I looked into this beautiful woman's eyes and uh, she, she had like glaucoma and just white all in her in her eyes and, and uh, she, the reason she screamed because her eyes miraculously opened and she could see. And uh, yeah, praise the Lord. You know, we've had lots of testimonies of this happening, but what's it like to watch it happen right before your eyes? Well, th this is the thing about Dr. Osborne is he, he didn't want any phony miracles. He wanted to make sure. So, of course, he did the fingers, and she could count the fingers, and that was great. 
but he asked her how she went blind and evidently it was her second pregnancy. She had a spinal injury and she had lost her sight. And so Dr. Osborne, very uh, wise, he said, well, do you have children? She says, yes, I have five children. And all this is documented. So he says, yes, you have five children. So then he said, well, you mean you have children you have not seen? She says, yes. And Dr. Osborne said, is there any of her children that are here that she wow. has not seen? Would you bring them up on the platform? And sure enough, here comes this beautiful young man. So the man. first time in her life she can see her own children. Yeah. So I'm standing there, and, I, and I'm not supposed to be standing there. I didn't think about it until afterwards, but I'm just standing there like, okay, now we're going to see, you know. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, the scripture says the Jews need a sign. So I'm standing right there. And this beautiful young man comes up and stares at his mother and no reaction from her. She's looking at him, and I, you can tell she does not know who he is. And she went up. And she took her hands and went and grabbed his face and started to feel his features from the top of his head, around his eyes, his cheekbones, his lips. And she broke and she just fell to her knees and started to praise the Lord. And as soon as she did that, a wave of glory went out from that platform. The Royal Rangers who were around keeping people uh, like 15 or 20 feet from the platform, that all caved in. People rushed the platform. Wheelchairs were flying in the air. <laughs> Crutches were flying in the air. But here's the point I want to make. This man of God was used to seeing miracles. But what did he say the, the difference between what he was used to and what occurred was? On this experience, what he was saying is that I've never seen healing and miracle signs and wonders without me even preaching. You know, it's the chemistry, if you will, of the one new man. I mean, God has been waiting. Uh, well, almost the saints in, the, uh, in heaven are looking over the balcony of heaven. When will the Gentile Christian and the Jewish believer be one in my body so my body can have and release the full power of God. And Rabbi, that's what you're saying you witness, Absolutely. the release of the full power of God. Rabbi Landry says, just as the identity of the church was hijacked, so was his. Find out what happened when his identity was stolen and how it changed his life when it was restored and how it will change your life. Be right back. You teach that the church's biblical heritage was robbed. When was it robbed and what was it robbed of? Well, during the Constantine period, you know, uh, you know there was uh, when the Romans couldn't control the, the, the Jewish church, the, the true believers, and they had to change uh, its identity by changing its culture and its calendar. So if you remove people from your culture, then you're going to lose your identity, and you change their calendar, and you're going to lose your blessings. You know, we know as Jews that, uh, that in Exodus, that just putting your feet under the table of Psalms 23, the Lord prepare a table for us in the midst of our enemies. That's the Passover table. There's nine blessings of provision and uh, uh, vision, protection, and uh, multiplication and prosperity for your family. And so all that, all that wisdom, knowledge, but most of all, identity. And Sid, you know this, identity is the key to the glory because identity has to do with personal intimacy that turns into a corporate intimacy and then turns into a congregational intimacy where people are being healed. And that's what happened in Togo. The alignment was there, Jew and Gentile, and the Lord literally prepared a table for us, let's say, in that soccer field, and there was multitudes of miracles. And it happened many other places. Now, well. you um, have firsthand knowledge of what it's like to have your identity stolen. Yours was stolen at birth. Tell me briefly what happened. Um, I was conceived out of wedlock, Jewish mother, Gentile father. Uh, and because of that, uh, both families said no to the marriage. So then they set up for an abortion. Three days before the abortion was uh, going to happen, my father, the Catholic, went to the Catholic priest on the Air Force Base and said, the uh, Jewish woman could go into Los Angeles and 
have the child born in a hospital there, a Catholic hospital, and put into a uh, Catholic orphanage. That's where I was there. I now, you pay attention to this, what he's sharing, because this is also what happened to the church. But go ahead. Yeah. And uh, so then I was six months in the orphanage. I was colicky. I was put in with the bad babies. And then, praise God, Ray and Rita Landry, Catholic man, Jewish woman again, the Lord's making his point, comes back and they adopt me at six months. You know, I went from being labeled, basically, first label is bastard, next one is orphan, next one is adopted, and then the next one is no identity, Jew or Gentile. And uh, then when I was born again at age 36, uh, I spiritually got visited by the Lord when I uh, was involved in a messianic wedding. But two years, or uh, three years after, it's in my book, three years after, um, I was saved, I miraculously was reconnected with my biological father that told me the story. And so I found out, whew, excuse me, I found out that. You, you had, by the way, you had no desire to meet them. You loved your, the parents that adopted right. you. Right, yeah. Uh, you, uh, but so why did you meet him? The Lord had me stay home from work and, uh, and, you know me well, I'm, I work hard, I'm a type A. And uh, I stayed home and I prayed and I had a download from the Holy Spirit. I operate as a prophet. And the Lord said, I, I want you to find your biological father. And, and I listened to it and I ignored it. And next day I was gonna go to work and the Lord said, stay home that day. And I was on the floor in my office at home and he said, uh, I want you to find your biological father. And I said, I don't want to open that can of worms. And the Lord says, when I open a can of worms, I take care of all the worms. And five phone calls later, I miraculously found my father in Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, he, he said, I would love to meet you. And at that time I was in the fruit business. Public supermarket was one of my accounts. And of course they have a, uh, a distribution center in Miami. And so I flew into Miami, drove to Palm Beach and sat in a little cafe. And I watched my, you know, 25 year old self walking into that. Literally, we look just alike. He literally was walking in. We have a little different waddly walk. Here he comes walking in. And uh, uh, it was just like, it was so healing. And that night, as the Lord said, that night I got to share with him uh, my testimony and had the honor and privilege of lead leading my biological father to the Lord the first night. <laughs> what, when you found out that you are Jewish, um, that's good. But how did it change you, Kurt? That's what I want to know. You know, it, it's, it's a spiritual thing. It has to do with honesty and integrity to the Lord, that you're being true to yourself. And, uh, you know, people ask me to write books for years. I've been in ministry a long time. But when Thomas Nelson came and said, listen, there's so much confusion over in the evangelical community and in, and in our uh, our community that we sell our books to over the Jewish roots. There's so much. And they said, listen, we know your testimony. Would you share with us, would you write a book and parallel your 63 years to the church? And because we feel like the Holy Spirit's bringing the church back to its roots. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Kurt, it is so amazing when you really find out how the identity of the church was stolen, this, this Emperor Constantine, uh, he literally made it uh, illegal to observe anything Jewish. He denuded the church of its identity. Well, the church is ready to get its identity back. You know who the church is? It's us. It's you. It's people. When we come back, I want to find out how to get our identity back. 
through Kurt Landry's brand new book, Reclaiming Our Forgotten Heritage, you will find out how to obtain the supernatural keys to a life of power and your God-given purpose through understanding the Jewish roots of your faith. Discover the mysteries concerning the early church that caused them to access healings, miracles, and supernatural breakthroughs. You will also receive Kurt's three-part audio CD teaching series, The Rabbi is Coming, Understanding the Feasts of the Lord. Discover how to obtain the nine blessings of Passover, including divine protection, divine authority, supernatural health, kingdom prosperity, and so much more. Don't miss out on getting Kurt Landry's revelatory book, Reclaiming Our Forgotten Heritage, How to Walk in the Supernatural Power of God, and Kurt's anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, The Rabbi is Coming, Understanding the Feasts of the Lord. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9606. Call or write today. I tell you, we're having so much fun. How does uh, 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 living in sync with God's calendar make a, a difference in us? The biggest thing it does is it shows Him that He is the Lord. And that's what brings the glory. He is the Lord. You know, in Hebrew we call it Moed, M-O-E-D. That means God orders Passover. God invites you at Passover, at Pentecost, Shavuot. He, he invites you to these He things. actually goes even stronger. He says these are, he doesn't say these are Jewish feasts. These are the feasts he of the Lord. He says these are my feasts. That, that puts it in a whole different dimension. Let me ask you something. Do you have to observe the Passover to have your sins atoned for? Do you have to observe the Passover to have God love you more? No. No, it's not about salvation. What is it about? Relationship. He's your daddy. It's your father. And you know this is the key. This is what got released in Taiwan. The last service I was there, I released the Father's love. And when we did, we just literally took our hands out like this, and you could just see waves of rows of people just falling in the Spirit, crying and weeping because there's been so much torment, particularly for the indigenous, uh, the Balumbi tribe that's there, the indigenous Taiwanese people were there in this service. And, uh, you know, their identity has been, has been dishonored. So when you come with the love of the Father, the only thing that reek, the only, uh, we have a saying, only your Father can name you. And you know that in Hebrew, it's very important. And, uh, you know, we're Jewish because of our mother, but we are, our father is the one that names you. And so when we release that father's love, the glory falls. Would it be okay with studio audience and you at home if I ask him to release the father's love? Anyone interested? I am too. <laughs> Would you do that right now? We'll do that. Father God, we come to you in Yeshua's name. And Lord, we are all battling that orphan spirit. We are being bombarded by the airways and every device that there is trying to steal our identity. And Lord, I thank you that your word says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Break that yoke of that orphan spirit. Break that yoke off that poverty. Break that yoke off that false counterfeit identity. And Lord, I ask now that you release the Father's love. I thank you, Lord, that perfect love casts out all fear and faith works through love. So Lord, I just, if I just lay hands on you right now and I decree that you would be all that you are called to be, just, just as Jacob blessed Manasseh, and he blessed Ephraim. He took his right hand and put it on the second born, the church, because the first born Jew, Ephraim, already had, already had the, uh, the, the anointing and that blessing. So Lord, I release that blessing of the Father's love to first born and the second born as one new man in Yeshua's mighty name. Wow. But I'll tell you, talk about born. Some of you just have religion, whether it's Hinduism, Judaism, uh, uh, and any, any ism, but do you have relationship with the living God? Do you have your own experiential knowledge with the living God? And of course you want this. Say this prayer with me out loud, and that is your entry into having 
the relationship you were created to have, to call Father God, Daddy. Repeat after me out loud. Dear God, God, I'm a sinner, sinner. and I'm so sorry. sorry. I believe to the best of my knowledge knowledge that the blood of Jesus Jesus washes away all of my sins, sins. and I am clean. And And now that I am clean, I ask you, Jesus, to come inside of me. Be my Lord. I want to hear your voice. I want to be a well done type of son, one that really you're happy with. I want to experience the fullness of your love. Amen.